Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, bring my mic a little bit closer. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned 1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for September 1st, 2020. It's the beginning of September. That's awesome. It's also Tuesday, which means it's Terraform Tuesday. So that's what I'm going to be covering in this episode. Specifically, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use HashiCorp Terraform and HashiCorp Vault together. As you probably already know, my Fridays are dedicated to HashiCorp Vault and the certification and going over the objectives. And Tuesdays are Terraform. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of like mix it up and mash them together a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do in this particular episode. Before I do that, I don't have any housekeeping items with the exception of a friend of mine, Josh Duffney, just officially published his Becoming Ans or Become Ansible book. So I'll include a link in the description. If you're thinking about learning Ansible, this is a great book to do it. I've already gotten about halfway through it and I'm like, wow, this guy lived it, he knows what he's talking about, and he's good at explaining it. So definitely check that out. It's available on Gumroad. And like I said, I'll include the link in the description. So that's my only housekeeping thing. Before we get into Terraform proper, I just want to check in with you. How you doing? What's going on? Things, uh, things going okay out there? I know, um, you know, sometimes when you start out the week, it can be a little rough. Right. And, and I talked in the previous episode about burnout and the concern of getting burnout when you get into technology. And, oh, I just noticed my graphic is off center for reasons that are totally unexplainable, except that I changed it from August to September. So that's fun. Uh, <laughs> live streaming is full of live and interesting issues. So we'll just have to deal with that. Whatever. It's fine. We're going to jump into VS Code and examine Vault. But first, I want to set up what I'm trying to do here. So uh, finished our check-in. I hope you're doing well. I hope things are going okay for you. I had a really good run this morning, so I'm feeling pumped. And I also got this shirt. Uh, I'll, st I'll stand up a little bit. That is the official HashiCorp Ambassador shirt. So yeah, you can kind of see that. So this is the official HashiCorp Ambassador 2020 shirt. I'm excited to get it. And I posted a pic on Twitter, but awesome. Thank you to the fine folks at HashiCorp for sending me the shirt feel honored to be part of the ambassador program. Anyway, so let's dive into what we're trying to do here, which is a combination of Terraform and Vault. So I think there's like three ways roughly that you could merge the two together. So the first one is if you want to stand up a new Vault server and you wanted to configure that Vault server using Terraform, you can do that. So if you want to lay down the policies, the authentication methods, uh, all, and some of the configuration settings, if you wanted to do all of that using Terraform, you could absolutely do that. The resources are out there. So when you stand up your Vault server, you'd give Terraform permissions, a Vault token, to go and make alterations to the configuration of Vault. And then you could go and set up all of your information. So if you have multiple Vault servers for different environments, this is the sort of thing that could kind of make a lot of sense for you. That's one potential use case. Another potential use case is you're storing secrets in Vault that are needed by Terraform to stand up an environment. So I'm going to configure a new environment that has some Azure SQL servers in it or something, and I want to give an admin password for those SQL servers, and it's a password I have stored in Vault. During my Terraform setup, I can use Vault as a data source, pull that information out, and push it over to my SQL server. The downside to that is once you've pulled a secret out of Vault and it's part of the Terraform state, that value is now stored in Terraform state. So you have to be very protective of your Terraform state. What would actually be a little bit better would be to have a way to bootstrap that resource that it can reach out to Vault itself and grab that secret. Now that's not always possible, but it, there are some ways around using pulling that Vault secret out and storing it in the Terraform state. So you kind of want to think through that process. The third way, and this one makes a lot of sense to me, is dynamically creating credentials for Terraform to be used against whatever cloud provider is part of your configuration. So let's think of I'm running something in AWS and I have a CI CD pipeline and I want Terraform to spin up in a container, get some short lived credentials, 
for AWS, go through the CI process with whatever my configuration is. And then when it's done, those credentials disappear after 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. And Vault can manage that whole process through a specific credential type, which is something uh, that I find pretty interesting. So to put all these pieces together, I put together a quick demo of how this would actually work. So let's bounce over to VS Code. There we go. And hopefully everything, you can see everything in the screen looks good. All right, so this is Terraform Tuesdays. And like I've said before, all of this code is available on my GitHub account in the repository called Terraform Tuesday. So if you wanted to follow along, you could absolutely do that. Basically what I've done here is first you have to stand up, first you have to stand up and configure Vault, and then you have to run the Terraform configuration. So it's in two pieces. So in this first piece here, if you don't already have the AWS CLI, you're going to need that. And then you have to configure your main profile to run these commands. And it's gonna to need to be able to create a user and policies within your AWS account. So you'll need appropriate permissions for that. But basically what we're doing is we're configuring the AWS secrets engine on vault to be able to dynamically create credentials that would be used by Terraform, let's say. So what we do is we create a user called vault account, and then we have to grant it the assume policy with a particular role. So here we're creating our vault account. And then the next thing we're gonna do is create this assume policy document. And we'll use that to create a role. And this is the role that we're gonna get credentials for through Terraform. So I'm creating a role called EC2 admin and the EC2 admin gets permissions down here for EC2 full access. So I create a role called EC2 admin and I grant the vault account, the assume role permissions on that role. And then I attach a policy to that role saying you can do whatever you want in EC2, that's fine. Awesome, okay. Now the next thing we gotta do is create an allow policy to be attached to our vault account. So we're going to get the ARN for the, um, for this role we just created, this EC2 admin role. And then we're gonna create this allow document that allows assume role on this particular role that we just created. And then we're gonna create a policy using this document called allow vault EC2 admin. So that's what we're calling it. So it's pretty obvious what it does. And then lastly, what we're going to do is attach this policy to the vault account that we just created. Now, what did the, all of this stuff do? Why, why am I telling you all this? Basically, the vault IM user account now has permissions to assume the EC2 admin role and generate STS credentials. That's what Vault's gonna be doing and giving those credentials to Terraform. So Terraform can do something, but those credentials can be very short lived, you know, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, just so Terraform can do what it does and then those credentials are no longer valid. They expire on the AWS side. So that's pretty cool. Then the last thing we need to do is get the access key and break it into the key and the secret access key, because we're gonna need those to configure the AWS secrets engine on vault to use this AWS account. All right. Now I have started up vault in a separate terminal down here. So it's up and running and this is just a dev instance of the vault server. So if you just run vault server dash dev, it'll stand this up and then you have to export the vault address. We're going to be using that as an environment variable and we're going to export the root token using the environment variable vault token. That way you actually don't have to run vault login because it's going to use those two values for any vault commands that you run. Now we're gonna run through configuring our AWS secrets engine by running vault secrets enable AWS. And then we're going to write the account that we're using the vault account to the configuration information for that secrets engine. And then we're gonna create a role on the vault side that corresponds to that EC2 admin role and the credential type is assumed role. So it's gonna give us back some STS credentials. And then I'm also gonna throw a secret in the secrets engine, uh, in the 
key value secrets engine to show that we can retrieve that through Terraform as well. So that's everything on the vault side. I know it's a lot of information. I went through it a little fast, but you can step through step by step by going through the example. Here's what's going on, on the Terraform side. So I do have to tell it where this AWS backend is with a variable. And the default is AWS. If you put it at a different path, you just change this path. You don't have to include secret slash. It's just whatever the path is for that secrets engine. And then the name of the role we want to get credentials for. It's EC2 admin, but if you change that, you can just specify something different with the variable. For the provider for Vault, we don't have to specify anything because the information it needs, the Vault address and the Vault token for access, both of those are included in our environment variables. So it knows to check for Vault underscore ADDR and Vault underscore token in our environment variables. For data, we're going to retrieve the value of that secret we put in the key value store. So we're gonna just tell it what path to get that secret on. And then we're gonna ask for AWS access credentials. And for that, we have to tell it where the backend is, which role we're using, and what type of credential it's retrieving, which is gonna be STS, which corresponds to assumed role, which sounds, conf sounds a little confusing, but the actual command in vault when you're getting that credential is vault right slash AWS slash STS and the role name, I think. So that's why it needs to know the type. And then we're just going to output this information to the screen. So uh, let's go back to the main window and I can just do Terraform in it to initialize this. It'll download the uh, provider for HashiCorp Vault. And now I can run Terraform, Terraform apply. I can use words, auto approve. So it'll automatically do all this. Go ahead and hit that. And it'll go out and let me just expand this a little bit. You can see here's the one secret that it pulled back out of vault. And here's my vault AWS access credentials, which I'll revoke as soon as this is over. So, you know, <laughs> whatever, they're fine. Um, so that is an example of how you would go about dynamically generating AWS credentials for your Terraform run using Vault to secure those credentials. And then those credentials, the ones I generated, those are good for an hour, but I can revoke them immediately through Vault or through Terraform destroy. Uh, no, I, you'd have to do it directly through Vault, but they'll expire. So I can go back to Vault and just say revoke credentials and they are gone. So that's how you might go about using Vault with Terraform kind of like a peanut butter and jelly situation. So that's, I've shown how to integrate Terraform with console in a separate episode, and now I'm doing Terraform in Vault. So I feel like I probably should do one Terraform in Nomad just to round it all out, but uh, I need to learn more about Nomad before I do that. So that'll do it for Terraform Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. You know, subscribe and share if you don't mind. I certainly appreciate it. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so I'm going to be talking about some tech analysis. There's some interesting things going on that I, I've been keeping on the back burner to talk about tomorrow. So that will be Wednesday. Until then, stay healthy and stay safe, everybody. Thanks.